Coming in at number 20, Iron Man 2. After the masterpiece that was Iron Man, Iron Man 2 had a lot to live up to. And when you go back and watch Iron Man 2, it's kind of a mess. There are times in the film where it feels like a collection of scenes just put together with no actual story taking place. With the transitions of Terrence Howard to Don Cheeto and a script that was kind of all over the place, the film is, although a mess, still a fun enough time to enjoy it, which is why it belongs on this list in the first place. Coming in at 19, The Amazing Spider-Man. Now, The Amazing Spider-Man, although not a fan favorite, is still a pretty good film. It's well made, it's well acted, and although it has some minor pacing issues, the film is still a very fun time at the movie theaters. Although it's nowhere near the original two Sam Raimi films, the film still does answer a few questions that weren't answered during that first franchise. The film's main problem is that it doesn't have have any real soul doesn't really show the reason to reboot the franchise in the first place therefore leaving a lot of fans wondering why reboot it anyway they could have just recast the role and just kept going nonetheless it's still a good time and highly recommended coming in at number 18 Captain America the first Avenger so I know for most people they absolutely adored Captain America the first Avenger but me on the other hand I found the movie very boring although I do love Chris Evans as Steve Rogers what was supposed to be a Civil War style superhero film just became a weird piece together film. A lot of weird montages and jump cuts just made the film feel odd. Also, the villain on the other hand, although very well acted by Hugo Weaving, gave us a final fight scene that was just very underwhelming. I still believe Captain America The First Avenger is a good movie, but nowhere near the praise that it gets from a lot of people. Still recommended, but understand what it is. Coming in at number 17, The Wolverine. The best thing about the Wolverine is that it's so much unlike all of the other X-Men films. It's darker, it's grittier, the character has been stripped down, and it really feels like a Wolverine comic book. Watching the unrated version gives us blood, cursing, and a lot of awesome action scenes. Sure, the movie falls apart in the final act, but it's hard to deny the fact that it was a fun ride while it lasted. Besides the final 20 minutes, the film is almost a perfect Wolverine movie. Here's hoping that the next iteration of the Wolverine is equally as dark and gritty as this one is. Coming in at number 16, Thor The Dark World. So for most people, Thor is like the run of the litter in the Marvel Universe. The character doesn't get that much play in the Avengers and he also doesn't really get that much to do in his own film. Nonetheless, Thor The Dark World gives us probably the most geekiest of all of the Marvel superhero movies. They throw in gods, elves, and even laser guns to make the movie work. The movie is filled with good acting, great humor, and amazing action sequences. We also get a lot of Loki in this film, which is always a great thing to see. I mean, Loki is obviously one of the best villains in Marvel Cinematic History. Sure, the ending feels like a cop-out, but we all knew this ending was coming because this character is a must-have for the franchise. Coming in at number 15, Blade. Now, I know most people actually forgot about Blade as a Marvel film, but Blade was actually one of the first really great Marvel movies. The film gave us Wesley Snipes in his most recognizable role. As a badass vampire hunter, Wesley Snipes does the film justice. Dark, gritty, and filled with plenty of gore and cursing to go around, Blade is a fun time at the movie theaters. Coming in at number 14, X-Men. Although Blade was the first successful Marvel film, it was X-Men that defined the next decade of superhero movies. Bringing us a superhero group that everybody loved growing up, Bryan Singer showed that he was a true visionary when it came to the X-Men world. Singer gave a spot on casting with every single character and also introduced us to Hugh Jackman. Sure, most of the other X-Men films that followed surpassed the film in many ways. Singer still gave us the start we needed to make superhero movies what they are today. Coming in at number 13, Thor. Thor marks Marvel's first real big risk. Taking us into space and attempting to do something that Green Lantern was not able to do, Thor introduces us to the Norse God of Thunder as our main hero who wields a hammer. What allows this movie to elevate is the fact that the casting was spot on. Chris Hemsworth is a natural movie star born to play this role. Throw in Anthony Hopkins, Natalie Portman, Idris Elba, and introduces to Tom Hiddleston, and what you get is an amazing Marvel film all around. To me, Thor is underrated. It doesn't get the love that it deserves. Going back to watch the film, I still have a blast and enjoy Kenneth Branagh's take on the superhero. Coming in at number 12, Blade 2. 
It's no surprise that Blade 2 has made it onto my list. The fact that Guillermo del Toro made this superhero film is reason enough to put it on my list. It became a major hit at the box office and although it does have some scripting issues, the action is terrific, the atmosphere that was built is absolutely phenomenal, and the engagement of the vampire mythology goes to a level that no one was expecting. Sure, some of the CGI doesn't hold up today, but the practical effects are absolutely phenomenal and some of Guillermo del Toro's best. This film became the American introduction of Guillermo del Toro, who went on to make films like Hellboy and Pacific Rim possible. Coming in at number 11, Spider-Man. Only a few years after Bryan Singer gave us the amazing X-Men film, Sam Raimi brought us the web singing Spider-Man. Arguably the most well-known and well-liked of the Marvel superheroes. Spider-Man took the world by storm and became a big budget blockbuster cinematic event. Spider-Man managed to bring us a great superhero film as well as a great Sam Raimi movie all on its own. It was the first movie to open at $100 million in its first weekend and like X-Men showed us what superhero movies can actually be. Coming in at number 10, Iron Man 3. Now the controversy is about to begin. Iron Man 3 is one of those films that people either love or hate, and the reason being is the twist that happens throughout the movie. Shane Black has a unique sense of humor, and he did something in this film that many Marvel comic book readers just could not get around. But in all honesty, the best thing about Iron Man 3 is how it feels nothing like the rest of the Iron Man films. It really does feel like a Shane Black movie. The film is filled with gags, amazing one-liners, and phenomenal action scenes. Although the plot twist pissed off a lot of people, this is still one of the better films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sure, the film has a weak ending and Guy Pearce as the ultimate villain was a bit lacking. This is still a film that I managed to see three times in theaters and I have never regretted it. Coming in at number 9, Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy, sure, it's a unique, odd property. But after watching Guardians of the Galaxy, I had to put Guardians of the Galaxy in my top 10 best Marvel films. It's fun, has a ton of action scenes, a ton of humor. The casting was absolutely phenomenal, and Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon is a character that I'm sure many children will absolutely love for years to come. Sure, the film isn't perfect, and it's filled with some minor flaws that may take a few of the moviegoers out of it. It's still one of the best times I've had at the theater this year. Coming in at number 8, X-Men Days of Future Past. Sure, X-Men Days of Future Past has its problems, but what can you expect from a film that is attempting to fix everything X-Men The Last Stand did? Brian Singer is back at the helms of this beloved franchise and he's attempting to fix everything wrong. Bringing us the two generations of X-Men together in one ultimate film, what we ultimately get is a phenomenal fun X-Men film. To see the old cast and the new cast together on one screen is something that is not to be missed. Taking a darker tone than all of the previous X-Men films, X-Men Days of Future Past will keep you glued to the seats until the credits roll. Coming in at number 7, The Incredible Hulk. Now I'm sure this is where I'm going to lose a ton of people. The fact that I have put The Incredible Hulk so high up on my list, I'm sure will piss off many of many moviegoers. But after the failure that was The Hulk, many people were worried and not sure what The Incredible Hulk was going to bring to screens. Sure, the film is a mixed bag and it has a ton of flaws, but for some odd reason, the film stands out as one of my favorite Marvel movies. It could be the fact that the film cast Edward Norton, one of my favorite actors in the lead role, or it could be the fact that the origin story was told so well this time around. To me, it's one of the most underrated Marvel films ever made. Many people actually forget about the Incredible Hulk movie. The film is utter entertainment. It's filled with a ton of action and a great cast to surround Edward Norton. And you can't lie that although the final battle was a bit too CGI heavy, it was an amazing showdown between monster and monster. I think the Incredible Hulk is a film that everybody should go back and check out because I feel it holds up very well today. Coming in at number six, X-Men 2. Every single X-Men film is ultimately chasing X-Men 2. The film represents everything that could have gone right with an X-Men film. The film takes everything that worked in the original X-Men film and takes it even further. Bringing the entire cast of the original film back and introducing Alan Cunning as Nightcrawler was the ultimate perfect balance. The film is filled with humor, thrills, and action and shows us what the superhero sequel can actually be. The film is able to balance the two sides of the X-Men franchise and show us why both sides are worth rooting for. The film is incredibly satisfying and one of the best times you would have ever had at a movie theater. Coming in at number 5, Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 is arguably one of the most perfect, well-made superhero movies of all time. Nailing everything from the superhero to the villain, the film is paced beautifully. The movie is goofy, romantic, frightening, and emotionally draining. Something you would never expect to see from a Spider-Man movie. It allowed us to see the ultimate potential of what superhero movies can actually be. Tobey Maguire is able to elevate his performance as Peter Parker, 
and Alfred Molina's Dr. Octopus gives us one of the most balanced and well thought out villains put on Marvel Cinematic screens. Many people will say that Sam Raimi reached his peak with Spider-Man 2 and it's actually hard to argue because the film is ultimately a masterpiece. Coming in at number 4, X-Men First Class. Now I know I praised X2 and talked about how amazing the film actually was, but X-Men First Class to me is the ultimate best X-Men film ever made. Essentially a reboot slash prequel, X-Men First Class took us to the retro X-Men, the X-Men of the past, giving us a top-notch cast of Michael Fassbender as Magneto and James McAvoy as Xavier, not to mention bringing us Jennifer Lawrence and Nicholas Holt in two phenomenal roles. And did I mention Kevin Bacon as Sebastian Shaw? The film is filled with acting at its best. Not to mention the fact that Matthew Vaughn was able to bring us amazing action, amazing character development, and have us care about every single X-Men both good and bad equally. X-Men First Class, I'm sure for many people, is not the best of the X-Men films. I'm sure for that one is going to be X2, but X-Men First Class to me is what X-Men films should all live up to. Coming in at number 3, Iron Man. The film that ultimately kicked off Marvel's billion dollar mega franchise. Iron Man is what you want a superhero movie to be. Give us an amazing origin story, amazing action, amazing humor, and a likable character. The casting of Robert Downey Jr. couldn't have been more perfect. An actor that was down on his luck and who didn't have much going for him, Marvel still decided to take a chance on the actor's talent. Essentially what we get here is a Batman Begins style movie. We see the beginning of Tony Stark and we see him rise and fall. The only downside to the film is that the final battle isn't all that epic and it kind of ends on a low note. Other than that, the film is absolutely perfect and one of the Marvel films that I've watched the most. Iron Man is the best origin story Marvel has ever put together. Coming in at number 2, The Avengers. Look, I know for many people The Avengers is the ultimate best Marvel film of all time, but I have to bring up the fact that the film didn't need that much to build upon. It took a bunch of characters that were already established in other worlds and threw them all into one movie. That being said, The Avengers is probably the best funnest time you can have at a movie theater ever being in that movie theater experiencing what the avengers were doing on this big screen is something that nobody can really explain to see all these amazing heroes that have been building up to this moment for years put onto one screen it's like being a young kid again like taking your action figures and creating the movie yourself also turning Tom Hiddleston's Loki into a household name that fangirls and fanboys all love. The film is just one hell of a ride and still one of the best blockbusters you're ever going to see. The film gives us action, humor, sadness, and every other emotion you can possibly feel. The Avengers is a one hell of a fun time and I'm sure for many it is the best of the Marvel films. Coming in at number one, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Now it could be that I'm still hyped off seeing Captain America the Winter Soldier earlier this year, but I feel that what this film did is what no other movie was able to do. Take the feel of the first film and completely turn it on its head. As you guys can see from this list, Captain America the First Avenger is way down my list. I had a much better time watching Captain America the Winter Soldier than I ever could have imagined. Giving us a phenomenal cast that included Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Anthony Mackie, and Robert Redford along with Samuel Jackson, a lot of what allows this movie to work is the setup for the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The directing duo of Anthony and Joe Russo bring forth a film that will ultimately change every single thing about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Turning me into a Captain America fanboy allowed this movie to be way better than I ever could have expected. It opens the floodgates of what's going to happen to Captain America and also gave us an amazing villain in the Winter Soldier. I know for many this won't be the best choice to go with for the best Marvel film, but for me it's the one that stands out the most, the one I can't get out of my head, the one I want to watch over and over again. Captain America the Winter Soldier is my favorite and I would love to hear what yours is. Alright guys, so those are my favorite Marvel movies of all time. Again, this is my list, my order. These are the films that I actually saw. I think I saw almost every single Marvel movie that's ever come out. I missed a few of the really, really old ones, but I didn't watch them, so they're not on this list. And I don't know if they're good, but I'm going by the ones that I saw. This is my list. If your list is different, make sure you guys comment below. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you actually think is the best movie. Do you guys agree with my list? Disagree with my list. Let me know below. Also, be on the lookout for my next video that I'm doing. It's probably going to be another top 10. Also, I'm going to probably try to review Guardians of the Galaxy this weekend. And some other things are in the works. So, be on the lookout. And as always, guys, if you guys like, comment, and subscribe, I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.